come on, girlfriend, let me tell you about this man who cleaned me up from the inside out and he wants to do the exact same thing for you. Hey girls, it's me, Amanda. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. As you know, in the month of June, we are talking modesty, modest living, definitions of modesty, clothing ideas and hacks, how to make outfits that are not really modest, more modest, how to be modest in your heart, your intentions, your actions, and in your thought life. If that's anything that interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. On Wednesdays at 8 a.m., I upload modesty videos, and on Saturdays at 8 a.m. We are doing some awesome Bible studies here on the channel. I would love to have you come alongside us for this journey. And if you tap that red subscribe button, that helps me to build this channel and this online ministry. And my goal is to share Jesus with the world one video at a time. And with your help, I think we can do this. Okay, so let's go Kingdom Crew. Let's talk modesty. Okay, so this video is going to be kind of a tough one for me to get through. And to be honest with you, being transparent is something that I enjoy to be, but sometimes to a fault. Do you understand what I mean? Have you ever revealed or shared something with someone just to and then in return feel like they almost use the information against you? So sometimes I feel like when a person doesn't know your past, or maybe even know you personally, it is less likely that they will be able to kind of hold things against you that you've struggled in. Does that make sense? Comment below and let me know if you understand what I'm saying. So even Jesus had to dust his feet and leave the city right where he was from and share this truth with others because even his own people were not accepting of his message. So this video is for you, Kingdom Crew, and let's talk about my journey. Let's talk about how I am being taken from where I was to where I long to be, which I believe is where you long to be as well, or else you probably wouldn't have clicked on today's video. So my modesty journey starts way back, probably where most girls kind of start to realize your body's starting to form, you're having these thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I did not grow up in the church from a young age. I was actually invited to church from some aunts and some cousins. Um, my family did not attend church regularly, um, ever actually. And so that was not something that I grew up thinking about. So naturally, the conversation of dressing more modest, thinking, feeling, and acting from a place of modesty was not something that I was taught as a young lady. So we will speed up to I was saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost at the young age of 12. I backslid. I will share my complete Christian testimony with you and how I came to know Christ on a personal level. Comment below and let me know if you would like to see an in-depth video about that. But so I backslid, right? I walked away from my relationship with Christ. I found myself wanting to be a pleaser of man, specifically men in general. And I think a lot of women can relate to that. I was buying clothes that were sexually revealing. My intention, if I am being honest with you, was not in the forefront of my mind. I wasn't thinking, oh, I'm going to buy this so I can make the guys look at me. Most of the time, occasionally, I believe that probably was my thought process. Um, but I found myself buying pieces of clothing that would accent certain parts of my body to be more revealing. Um, and I desired that attention from men. It made me feel good. Can you relate to that? Um, because understand that that's one of the ways that the enemy works is to make you want the desires of your flesh, to want this praise and the accolades and the attention from men. Those sexually seductive spirits, let's be honest, that attack our minds, um, they just go to work and really just take over. And so I was dressing immodestly. I was making immoral choices with my body. I found myself from one relationship to another. Um, um, 
And if I'm being honest with you, one situation that led to another situation, one heartbreak after another heartbreak, you see, I was traveling down this road of immorality and, you know, these seductive spirits and things because I was looking for a fullness that I did not have. I was lacking in my life this one thing and I attempted to fill that one thing with being attractive and being sensual and sexual and seductive. And no, the me that you guys know now is not that person on any level and I have definitely had to get to a place in my walk with God where I could just rid myself of holding myself accountable for those actions because you see once we repent of sin the sin is covered by the wonderful amazing precious blood of Jesus Christ and once you have that true forgiveness and you've turned away from that sin in your life God has forgiven you but oft times ladies can you relate we don't forgive us we hold on, we harbor, we dwell on those things that we did or said, the way that we allowed ourselves to carry and dress our bodies, the way that maybe those actions, intentions, thoughts, and realities affected our families. Maybe we had children. I had small children as I was going through this process. And it's a shame to say that my children saw the process. And again, you know, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Condemnation is the thing that I strive to suppress and pray through and allow God to reveal to me that that is not who I am. That may have been something that I was or participated in pre-Jesus, as I say, um, before Christ. So in my BC life, um, I struggled in that area, but God has cleaned me up and he will you too, if this is your desire. So all of the attention-seeking behaviors, because of that lacking, because of that void that I was attempting to fill with things of this world, right? I'm, I'm sure that so many of us can relate because immorality and indecency and seductive spirits and Jezebel spirits and things like that run rampant through the, our land today. So moving past those things, I was married, divorced, married, divorced. That's a whole another video. Um, you know, let me know if that's something that interests you, how to move past those things. I found myself coming back to the Lord. And when I came back to the Lord, my first instinct, because I knew what the Bible says about modesty, it maybe doesn't use that specific word, but this cleanliness, this holy way of living, this desire to be more like God and less like our flesh, less like the world, to be set apart in intentions, thoughts, actions, deeds, and dress. This desire, this overwhelming desire to be like Jesus and less like this world and to take a stand and almost take back all those years of time that I had walked away from God. Oh, this desire was so strong that I wanted to jump head first into making these decisions in the, specifically the way that I was dressing so that I could almost declare to the world, you know, I'm back living for God now. I'm going to do this. I don't condone that, although I walked therein for some time. And that is an issue for another video, but when you do not pray first and ask God to guide you in those decisions, oftentimes you can make hasty choices. And even though your intentions, my intention was good, I then struggled for years in my modesty journey because of the why not being there. I understood the meaning of dressing modestly and I knew that my intentions and my heart were after God's own heart, but the problem was I didn't have a good solid foundation as to stand on the why. Why do I want 
to dress different than the world? Why do I want to physically stand out? And then to take it to a deeper level when we're talking modest living, why do I need my heart to be modest? Why do I need my thought life to be modest? Why? Because the Bible teaches us that we must decrease so that Christ can increase right? The Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Modesty, ladies, is a way that we can decrease in the flesh, physical, real world realm, but that God is able to increase, right? So this is such an in-depth process, but my point to sharing my journey and my story with you is to help you to understand that at times we stumble upon YouTube videos, Instagram feeds, Facebook pages, and what we see is this image of this holy looking woman that we aspire to be more like. But what we don't see is the process and the journey that it took for said individual to get to this place of consecration, of separation, to become more like Christ. But in turn, what we see is that picturesque, perfect view of this woman who shares videos on YouTube, posts posts on her Instagram, and updates her story with these wonderful images of godliness, right? And we think that in order to be godly and holy and consecrated and separated and anointed, that we must to then look this certain way. Ladies, I want to encourage you from someone who has lived an incredibly immodest life, an incredibly immoral life. I encourage you to know that although your intentions are right, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go to God in prayer and ask him to help you make your thought life more modest. The more you dwell on Christ, the more you have kingdom thoughts, the more you surround yourself with that of which you hope and aspire to become, God will slowly clean you up from the inside out. And what he wants you to look like in your modesty journey, he will create those necessary changes for you in your world. So I want to encourage you to be slow in your process, to understand your why. Know and have a solid foundation for which to stand on, which is the word of God. Spend time in prayer and allow God to mold you into who he wants you to be because ultimately modesty, modest intentions, thoughts, actions, the way you live out your Christian womanhood in front of all the world that you encounter every day is based on allowing Christ to do the work in and through you so that you can impact others for the kingdom because ultimately that is our goal, right ladies? We want to be modest but not be modest for us but be modest for him so that we can lead them to him. I hope me sharing some of my journey with you has impacted you and empowered you and has allowed you to see that just because everything looks holy on the outside doesn't mean that it didn't take an extremely long, painful, heartbreaking journey to get to the result that you see today. I pray that my transparency has blessed you today. If there is a modest topic that you would like to hear about, please comment that below and let me know. I do owe a quick short apology to a friend that reached out on Facebook Messenger on our Staying Kingdom Minded page. She asked me a very vitally important question. And to be honest, I had some sick kiddos and I found myself short of time. I did not have a chance to reach back out to her. And by the time I did, the comment was gone. I apologize from the bottom of my heart that I was not able to make myself available to you in that moment. And I can only pray that you will reach back out so we can connect because I truly believe that it is the perfect will of God that you receive the Holy Ghost. And that's actually what 
that particular comment was about. So I will be making a video to answer your question and I can only pray that at some point we can connect about that further. I felt like a public apology was needed because my goal was to always make myself available to you ladies at any minute of any day, to be completely honest with you, there may come a time where I can't do that because the following of the ministry is so great. And honestly, I pray to have that problem. I want to share Jesus with the world one video at a time. I want to create a modesty movement that is so large and that is so profound that we aren't the ones that look different they are the ones that look different. And then I pray that we can wrap our arms around the ones who haven't found Jesus and say, come on, girlfriend, let me tell you about this man who cleaned me up from the inside out and he wants to do the exact same thing for you. So I'm going to post in the description box below a bunch of youtube -y things. There's going to be a playlist for the Modesty series. I pray you'll get caught up a playlist for the Bible study series we're doing Saturday morning. I pray you'll get caught up and I pray to see you over on Instagram. That link will be below as well. Don't forget to smash the big red button and join our kingdom crew and I will see you in our next video which is our Bible study series Saturday at 8 a.m. God bless girls and stay kingdom minded in all things.